few months ago, I thought I'd found the ultimate set of drawing pencils, but after using them on several drawings, I found a big flaw with them. And I wanna go through my thoughts so that you know whether they're still worth getting. Okay, so I tried out the world's first ever matte graphite pencils because I used to love using graphite, but the shine just drove me crazy. So I tried these out and honestly, I was so impressed with the results I got with these. This just shows how excited I was about these pencils if I just bought this many. And over the last few months, I have used these pencils so much. I've been working on a new drawing course and I have been using these pencils for every single drawing that I've done. And I was kind of disappointed to notice a problem actually come up as I was using them. And this problem means that if you use these pencils the wrong way, then you won't get the results that they claim to have. These are some drawings that I've actually been doing recently with these pencils. Here's a perfect angle. Can you see how much shinier this one looks to this drawing here? They were both done with the same pencils. Looking at some of those darks, can you see how much they are shining? And they all give you a bit of shine but I definitely feel like this one and this one has the most shine out of the four. And there was one thing that I did differently with the dog drawing and the snail drawing compared to these other two that I definitely think has given me a shinier result. The thing that made the difference was actually the paper that I used. For two of the drawings, I used this paper and for the other two, I used this paper. My drawing room is a bit of a mess right now. For everyone that knows me, especially my husband, he will tell you that I am one of the messiest people he knows. Like, don't ask me why there's an onion here. But anyway, what is going on with this paper? Paper can be such a sort of overlooked drawing supply, so much so that I didn't even necessarily consider trying different papers when I tested out those pencils the first time. But what I've really come to realize is that your pencils can look completely different depending on what paper you use. And not just in terms of shine, but in other areas like value and how dark your pencils can get as well. One of the papers that I used for my drawings was this Bristol Smooth paper. And the other paper that I used was hot press watercolor paper, which had a little bit more texture. But which of these papers did the pencils look better on? For each of these types of paper, I'm going to do a couple of different swatches. I'm gonna do a 6B with medium pressure, and I'm gonna use the same amount of pressure for each type of paper and try to keep everything the same about how I'm laying down the pencil. And I'm going to do the same thing with the 14B pencil, just using medium pressure. This one looks a lot smoother and less grainy, and this one clearly has a more textured look. And even though I use the same pressure for these, you can see that this one looks a lot darker. And now what I'm doing is I'm gonna use each pencil again, but this time I'm applying very heavy pressure. I don't know how obvious it is on camera, but you can tell that this side, everything is a bit shinier, especially if you look at the medium sort of pressure swatches that I did. You can see that these two, they don't really shine, whereas the other two, they shine a lot more. And that's the problem that I had. I found that even when I was adding light pressure, it just got shiny so quick. Whereas with the more textured paper, because the surface has more texture, it can take more of that graphite without sort of getting this slick layer of shading that makes it look shinier. And another thing that I noticed with this really smooth paper is that my shading actually looked streakier. I don't know if you can see here, but can you see how much streakier this looks? Whereas this one, even though it has a sheen, it's a lot more even looking. And it's kind of like when you have a wax crayon and you put it on paper and it builds up that streakiness when you've just adding more on top of an already slick surface. I feel like that same thing happened here. When I used lighter pressure, I was able to build up these values without getting a really shiny look. And I would much rather my drawings turn out more like this than have like a really, really shiny layer for all of those shadow areas. I suppose the question becomes, are these pencils still worth using? Are they still these life-changing pencils? Well, I wanna go through three reasons why these are still better pencils to use than your regular graphite pencils. The first reason is because of these 
three bad boys, the 10B, 12B and 14B pencil. I still can't get over the fact that there's a 14B pencil out there. I love these pencils. These darker tones are perfect. It's hard to get in darker values with usual graphite pencils, but these make it so easy to get those really dark values. And getting dark values into your drawings is honestly one of the most important things for getting a realistic drawing. Because let me show you what ends up happening when you're trying to get in darker values, but you just can't get them dark enough with your graphite. Look at the mistake that I used to make. Down there beneath all of this rubbish is all of my drawings from the last several years. Okay, this is the drawing that I was talking about. For this drawing, I remember that I really wanted to go darker, but my graphite just wouldn't get dark enough for some of these darker shadows. So what I actually did was I used some kind of pen to try and go darker in these areas. And you can really clearly see where I've used pen for the hair. And I used this pen because I just felt like I had no other options. My graphite wouldn't get dark enough. And for any of you that's tried to use charcoal or carbon pencils on top of graphite, you know that that just doesn't stick on top of graphite. So I felt like I had no other option here. But now with these pencils, you can go darker. You can go really, really dark to that sort of black value. And I'm sure you can see how much more realistic this recent drawing I did is compared to this one, which has a lot of harsh, thick details and all of these sort of outlines compared to this one where everything is a lot more subtle, soft, and just natural looking. And honestly, I didn't get to that level overnight. It's took many years of practicing and making a lot of mistakes and trying to figure out where I'm going wrong and what's off with my drawing. So I've put together a free mini class that you can take that will walk you through mistakes to avoid. And it will also show you the important things that will make your drawings a lot more realistic. It's completely free and I've even included a checklist that you can use for each of your drawings where you can just read through it and tick it off so that you're actually working on the things that will make the most difference in your drawings rather than wasting time on things that you think are gonna make your drawings more realistic, like more detail or better supplies that actually don't make much difference if you don't already have a few really important fundamentals in place first. So I'll leave a link at the top of the description so you can check out that free training. The second reason this pencil set is still worth using and still my favorite pencil set to use is because it's just really convenient. Before I got this set, if I wanted my pencil drawings to look pretty matte, I'd have to use graphite pencils for the lighter values and then try to sort of preserve where my shadows are and use the charcoal pencils or carbon pencils to do those areas. And it was kind of awkward because charcoal and graphite don't really mix well together. So you'd have to try and plan it out and keep them separate. And just using graphite on their own meant that you got a really shiny drawing and you didn't really get those really dark jet black tones that you wanted. Whereas these pencils, yeah, they're a bit shiny, but you do get darker values than with normal graphite and they are less shiny than normal graphite. And you just have a set of pencils from light value to dark values that just work really well together. But honestly, when I am using these pencils, I won't use it with that smooth paper or any type of like plate surface or really smooth paper because I don't like the result that it gives. I don't like the extra shine and that sort of streaky quality that I found that I got with that paper. I will be using that sort of hot pressed watercolor paper or just a slightly more textured paper. My favorite hot pressed watercolor paper to use is the Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolor paper. I love this paper. And the third reason that these are still gonna be my favorite set of pencils is because the actual pencil quality is so good. They lay down really smooth, really consistent. I don't get any like little scratchy bits of lead or anything like that. They sharpen really nicely. And I just love how they blend, how they arrange the detail that you can get. I still think they are the best option out there at the moment. I think this is the best we're gonna get because that's just the property of graphite. Next, I wanna help you make your very next drawing your most realistic one yet. So remember to check out that free mini class, that free training on how you can make more realistic drawings. I go through all of the mistakes to avoid and what actually will make your drawing more realistic. Check out that training and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.